In Tanzania, a stocky animal marched through a shallow lagoon. It was adorned with spikes that offered its body ample protection, similar to a porcupine. But this was no porcupine or mammal, rather a 152 million year old dinosaur, the Kentrosaurus. It has recently garnered a lot of fame for its various appearances in paleomedia. However, the Kentrosaurus has been on the radars of paleontologists for a long time, being discovered all the way back in 1909 when a German expedition located numerous specimens within the Tenda Guru Formation located in southeastern Tanzania. The expedition could tell right away, thanks to the number of remains, that it was a stegosaur, with its spikes being the biggest clue. And because of its prickly defenses, it was quickly given its name, which translates to the Pointed Lizard. However, while sharing the commonality of spikes with other stegosaurians, it was smaller than most of its relatives, yet still not small by any means, as most individuals were able to reach 4.5 meters or 15 feet in length and could have weighed anywhere from 700 to 1600 kilograms or 1500 to 3500 pounds. Some remains also suggest that larger individuals existed, but just how large is unknown. Despite being on the smaller side when it comes to being a stegosaur, the Kentrosaurus maintained many classical stegosaurian body traits, such as having a long tail, an elongated flat head, and powerful robust limbs, which made it quite stocky for its size. There also appears to have been two types of Kentrosaurus, with one type being more stout than the other, likely the result of sexual dimorphism, with males being more robust. The body structure of the Kentrosaurus was also very important because thanks to having a long tail and hind limbs that were longer than the forelimbs, the Kentrosaurus had a center of mass that was located far back in its body, being located just in front of its hips. This has led some to believe that it was able to enter a tripod stance that would allow it to eat mid-level vegetation or give itself an elevated view in order to better spot predators. Its peculiar center of mass and powerful legs also granted the Kentrosaurus exceptional mobility despite the number of spikes and plates it had, which provided another tool that it could use to get away from danger. However, in the case of an encounter with a predator in which there was no escape, the Kentrosaurus was by no means defenseless, as it was well equipped thanks to its eye-catching armament, which consisted of an initial row of plates that were made of bony osteoderms that transitioned into two rows of giant spikes that ran down its back and tail, and uniquely, it also possessed shoulder spikes as well. Having these pointed ends on its lower half and shoulders helped to deter side and rear attacks from predators and would have threatened even larger theropods, as the spikes were sometimes longer than 2 feet or 0.6 meters. And the Kentrosaurus had another trick up its sleeve, as it sported an elongated tail that contained the body's longest spikes. Furthermore, the tail was made up of at least 40 vertebrae, making it extremely flexible and allowing the Kentrosaurus to utilize its tail spikes, otherwise known as the Thagomizer, as a giant flail. And studies have shown that it was exceptionally capable at wielding its weapon, possibly swinging its tail at 50 kilometers an hour or 31 miles per hour. At this speed, it could do two things strike predators rapidly, or use power blows. If it chose rapid hits, it would have shredded predators apart, causing stabbing and slashing wounds to soft tissue, while possibly breaking less robust bones. On the other hand, if it used concentrated power blows, it would have been able to break the thick leg bones of small and medium-sized theropods purely by blunt force, while also possibly crippling large theropods. And this would have been vital, as it lived in an environment jam-packed with a variety of theropods. It's also thought that thanks to the shoulder spikes, it may have been able to charge at predators and turn itself towards them in order to puncture them with the spikes. All these deadly options made the Kentrosaurus one to not be trifled with, and by having such killer weapons, some may be led to believe that it had a taste for blood. However, like the other members of its family, it wasn't a carnivore, rather a herbivore. Its small head was fitted with a strong beak, which it would have used to slice up low-level foliage for consumption. Because of the way its mouth was structured, it barely chewed its food, rather swallowing large chunks of vegetation. And as talked about before, it may have been able to rear up on its hind legs, which would have allowed it to also eat plants that were mid-height, giving it an advantage over other herbivores that were similar in size. Another advantage the Kentrosaurus potentially had over other herbivore dinosaurs was numbers, 
as remains have indicated that it possibly lived in herds or groups. This would have offered even more protection through safety in numbers, and may have also been where its plates came into play. Like many Stegosaurians, the Kentrosaurus had numerous plates on the front of its body, and some paleontologists believe that this group of dinosaurs used them as a means to identify each other, which would have come in handy while traveling in theoretical herds. Others, however, think their usage was less for social life and more for a means of thermoregulation. And regarding social life, it's thought that the Kentrosaurus did not have a complex one, as paleontologists analyzed two nearly complete brain cases and concluded that it was most likely not that intelligent. Though, even if it lacked brains, it definitely had bronze, which was necessary in order to thrive in its ecosystem of prehistoric Tanzania. It existed towards the end of the Jurassic, and during this time, its habitat was composed of three kinds of environments, lagoons, coastal plains, and inland areas. Studies on what would have been the lagoons and coastal plains show that vegetation was quite sparse in these areas, being more concentrated inland in the form of conifers. It seems that herbivores like the Kentrosaurus prefer these heavily vegetated inland areas. However, this made such regions favorable for theropods as well, and there were a lot of them. Currently, it is thought that up to nine different theropods shared its ecosystem, including the Elaphrosaurus, Veteropristosaurus, and Ostafricosaurus. Some remains have further suggested that African species of Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and Torvosaurus may have lived alongside and potentially hunted the Kentrosaurus, which if true, makes the spikes all that more important. And the sheer number of theropods in the area may have contributed to the Kentrosaurus's growth rate, as studies on its remains suggest that it grew extremely fast, and faster than its relatives. This would have helped decrease the time during which juveniles would have been completely vulnerable to attacks. Despite living in a world seemingly run by theropods, there were other dinosaurs too, which included seven fully described sauropods, two of which were the enormous Giraffe Titan and the short-necked Dicreosaurus. Smaller dinosaurs were also present, exemplified by the Dysolotosaurus. Additionally, non-dinosaurs also lived in these areas, including various pterosaurs, mammals, crocodiliforms, amphibians, and fish. To many, this habitat was quite similar to the Morrison Formation located in North America, at least from a fauna standpoint, and some regard the Kentrosaurus as being its ecosystem Stegosaurus and it plays the role well because it has just as many iconic features as its North American counterpart. Sadly, despite possessing many amazing features, the Kentrosaurus did not persist into the Cretaceous period, seemingly disappearing along with a large amount of other stegosaurs. It's not known what caused the sharp decline in the stegosaur family. However, some point out to the correlation between their decline and a decrease in cycad diversity and an uptick in angiosperm radiation.